star, an all-time immortal in his sport, is the subject of the bonus biography round on the Sports Challenge. Competing today, last week's winner, the champion basketball Hall of Famer, George Mikan. Bill Sharman. And Dolph Shay. This week's challengers are the Yankee World Series heroes. Winning pitcher of seven World Series games, he's now president of Baseball's American Association, Allie Reynolds. Holder of more World Series records than any pitcher in history, Whitey Ford. All-time baseball great home run record holder for World Series play, Mickey Mantle. And now, here is your host on the Sports Challenge, the award-winning voice of the Rams and the Angels, Dick Ember. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sounds as if Mickey Mantle has a few friends here with him on Sports Challenge today. Our champions are the NBA Hall of Famers, Big George Mikan, old number 99 of the Lakers, and Bill Sharman, who a lot of people forget was a baseball player, too, and was in the Dodger dugout when Bobby Thompson hit that home run in 1951. And Dolph Shea is perhaps one of the best all-time working that ball inside could shoot with either hand. And they'll be challenged by the New York Yankees, and they picked up a few extra bonuses with those World Series. Ali Reynolds, who used to close a lot of deals, he start what he would uh, what he would start. He would finish well in one of the great pitchers of all time, Whitey Ford, who owns more wins than anyone ever in those pinstripes. And a uh, man named Mantle, we're happy to have back here on Sports Challenge. Welcome back, Nicky. I, I met you've schooled your partners today, and you're ready to go. You're all ready. Set? All right. We hope you have fun. Each team is competing for one thousand dollars worth of AMF Voight Sports Equipment. Runners-up play for $500 worth. And, Johnny, for what youth groups are today's teams playing? This week, the Basketball Hall of Famers are playing for the Boys Club of Manatee County of Bradentown, Florida. And the New York Yankees represent the 68th Precinct Youth Council of Brooklyn, New York. Voight has been a leader in sporting goods for 50 years. All sports from basketball to bowling. Whatever sports equipment you need, you have more fun with Voight. Dick? We'll begin our first category, the award winners, and a highlight from the brilliant career of Wilt Chamberlain, right after this Sports Challenge timeout. The Hall of Famers against the New York Yankees. Ready, men at the buzzers. Here's our first question. Toss up for 20 points. If you get it correctly, you earn the 10-point free throws. The category, the award winners. And we begin with a man who has been named the most valuable player in his sport five times. 1967 NBA playoffs. Wilt Chamberlain of the 76ers, again, the National Basketball Association's most valuable player. But the playoffs have been Boston's realm, featuring the play of Big Bill Russell. The Celtics and Russell have been the game's dominant force. But 1967, a lucky year for number 13, Wilt Chamberlain, as he sparks the 76ers to the NBA title, breaking Boston's playoff stranglehold at eight in a row. Chamberlain is a five-time winner of the NBA's Most Valuable Player Award for your toss-up and 20 points. Name the one other player who has been named MVP of the National Basketball Association five times. The Yankees were there first, Whitey Ford. Bill Russell. Bill Russell is correct for 20 points. <laughs> so Whitey Ford beat the National Basketball Association team at their own game. You've earned the free throws. Nicely done. This is for one of our guests with the Yanks. If no one else has done it, Sports Challenge Mickey Mantle will now designate you as the all-time tape measure hitter in Major League Baseball. And here's one of the reasons for our choice. Freddie Green on the mound for Pittsburgh. Mickey Mantle at bat in the World Series. A fly ball deep to right center field. Mantle has really tagged this one. Clemente will be nowhere near it. That's over the wall. A long drive for Mickey Mantle. A tape measure home run. Roger Maris will score ahead of him. The Yankees lead 5-1. to one. The tape measure next for Mantle. That homer later was estimated to have traveled almost 500 feet, worthy of the Forbes Field tape measuring equipment. What one do you think you hit farthest of all? With all the ones we've read about, which one do you remember the longest? Well, the one that they measured in Washington, uh, they said went 565 feet. But I think the hardest ball I ever hit one almost hit out of the Yankee Stadium. You got them all, nevertheless. And it was a frightening sound for the opposing pitchers. Your question for 10 points, Yankees. Can you name the stadium that is the new home of the Pirates in Pittsburgh. Three Rivers Stadium. Three Rivers Stadium is correct for 10 points. Oh, Your second free throw, the category award winners, and this winner in pro football, where he has been both successful and controversial. Vikings are commanding lead, 45-14 over the Colts. Joe Camp rolling to the left and looking downfield. 
He plants and fires over the middle for halfback Jim Lindsay. He's open at the five. He's got it, and he's in for a touchdown. And ladies and gentlemen, that ties the National Football League record. Seven touchdown passes thrown by quarterback Joe Cap here for the Vikings today. And interestingly, that judge, Adrian Burke, on the field right now is one of five men who have completed that feat. Your question. In addition to Cap and Burke, only three other passers have thrown seven touchdowns in a pro game. For 10 points, name one of the three. You got five seconds. Seven touchdown passes in one single game. Y.A. Tittle? Y.A. Tittle is correct for 10 points. Very good. Sid Luckman and George Blanda are the other two. All right, after the first round, the Yankees have a 40-0 lead. Here's the all-important toss-up. The category, famous finishes. First, the Baseball World Series, October 5th, 1967. Second game of the 1967 World Series at Boston. At the top of the eighth inning, Jim Lomborg has a no-hitter going. Two men out, Julian Javier at bat for the Cardinals. He swings, a line drive drops in there into left field, going toward the corner. It's a base hit, the no-hitter is spoiled. Javier goes into second base, standing up with a double. Lomborg doesn't let the one hit throw him. It's the top of the ninth, two out, still five to nothing. Kirk Flood is the batter. A fly ball to the outfield. Smith comes over from center into right center field, waits for it, takes it for the out. The ball game is over. A one-hitter for Jim Lomborg, a 5 to nothing World Series win over the Cardinals. That year of 1967, Jim Lomborg was named the American League's Cy Young Award winner for pitching excellence. For your toss-up question in 20 points, which one of Lomborg's teammates won the American League's most valuable, the NBA stars? Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski is correct. The question was... Who won the American League's MVP award? It was Kyle Yastrzemski. The pitching award went to Lomborg. You've earned the two free throws and a chance to tie the game, NBA stars. This play spelled a winning finish for one of the great football teams of its era. It's the NFL title game, 1951, the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Time running out here at the Coliseum. The Rams are tied with the Cleveland Browns at 17 apiece. Van Brocklin from the 19 sets the line and gives to Glenn Davis, sweeping to the outside at the 20, rolled out of bounds at the 22-yard line. The 1951 title game in the balance. Norm Van Brocklin back to throw. Looks left, pumps once, throws downfield. Tom Fears behind the defense. He's beaten Warren Lars to 50. Down the sideline, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Rams. They beat the Browns for the 51 title. Your question for 10 points. Both Tom Fears and Norm Van Brocklin, who collaborated on that 73-yard play, became Pro Football Hall of Famers. So did five other players in that particular 1951 title game. For five points each, name two of them. You have five seconds. Pro Football Hall of Famers in that game, the Browns and the Rams. Bill? Uh, Elroy Hirsch. Elroy Hirsch is correct. Bob Waterfield. And Bob Waterfield is correct for 10 points. The others were Andy Robustelli, the great defensive end with the Rams, and Otto Graham and Marion Motley of Cleveland. Second free throw, a chance to tie. Famous finish, boxing. The end of an era. Madison Square Garden, 1951, eighth round, Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano. Here's Marty Glickman. Marciano trying to get that one punch home. Back against the ropes goes Lewis. A left and a right and down he goes and through the rope on the edge of the ring. It's all over. He can't get up. He's being helped to his feet now by referee Ruby Goldstein. And Dr. Vincent Nautiello, the Gordon's ringside physician, and all of Joe's handlers are looking after the former champion now. But apart from the days he's in, Joe is okay. Those final punches of Marciano simply did him in. It's been a fight that ends, in a sense, with overtones of sadness, for this is the end of an era. Joe Lewis has come to the close of a glorious ring career. A great old boxer goes down to defeat, but a young great fighter comes up with a victory. For Rocky Marciano, it's a never-to-be-forgotten triumph over the famed Joe Lewis. It was the end of an incredible era for Joe Lewis. As a pro, Lewis lost to only two fighters in addition to Marciano. For five points each, name those two. Five seconds. Your answer, please. Uh, Max Smelling. Max Smelling is correct for five points. And... Um... Joe Walcott. Joe Walcott is incorrect. So we can give you 10 points, Yankees, if you can come up with the other man who beat Joe Lewis. Max Schmeling did it. You saw Marciano do it. Who was the other fighter? Your answer, please. Ezra Charles. Ezra Charles is correct for 10 points. 
So after two rounds, the score reads the New York Yankees 50 and the NBA Stars 35. Another great game going, and we'll have round three record breakers. And a look at two record breakers, a horse and a jockey, right after this sports challenge timeout. Santa third and Ciganetto, Ack Ack in front, Tom Chow and Menta, Ack Ack, Tom Chow, Menta and Ciganetto, and Ack Ack is the winner by three and a half lengths. A great horse and a great ride. Your toss-up question and 20 points. Who was the winning jockey aboard Ack Ack? Bill Sharman. Uh, Willie Shoemaker. Willie Shoemaker is correct, one of the all-time, if not the all-time best. You've earned the two free throws. You have the lead, 55-50. Our next record breaker holds the all-time pro record for the most kick returns in an NFL career. Graham Dalvin Heyman waits at the goal line. Jim Bakken sinks his right toe into it. This kickoff is long and deep. Spins down to Heyman at the two. At the five, behind the wedge at the 10. Cuts to the side at the 15-yard line. To the outside of the 20. Gets a couple good blocks there at the 25 to 30. Back to the inside, 35-40. Jersey tackle, no. He gets away at the 50. 45-40. A block of Cardinals chasing Alvin Heyman, but he's going to go all the way for a Rams touchdown. Before coming to the Rams, Alvin Heyman played with two other teams in the NFL for five points each. Name them. The other two teams for whom he played. Philadelphia Eagles is one. The Eagles is one. The other for five points. Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers incorrect. So for ten points, Yankees. And that would tie the score if you can give me the name of the other team that Alvin Heyman played for. Baltimore. Yep. Baltimore is correct. We have a tie game. Mickey Mantle with the correct answer. A 60-60 tie, and the second free throw belongs to the NBA stars. And now to baseball and this great record breaker. 4-3 Montreal. Bill Stoneman delivers, and Willie Mays drills it to deep left center field, and that ball is hit, and it's gone. Willie Mays home run. The Giants lead 5-4, and this is a historic trip for Mays. 1,950th time he's crossed home plate. A new National League record. Willie Mays. For 10 points. When Willie Mays scored that 1,950th run, whose National League record did he break? You have five seconds. Uh, Stanley Musial. Stan Musial is correct for 10. We completed three rounds on Sports Challenge, and the score reads the NBA Stars 70 and the New York Yankees 60. Fourth round toss-up question. This category is consecutive streaks, and our first streak belongs to a man who has a rather slanted approach. The Chiefs trying a 52-yard field goal. Jan Senaru delivers. The ball is up high enough. It's long enough. If it's good, it's a record. It is a new record for Senaru. Senaru, 13th consecutive successful field goal 13 in a row for Santa Rose a new pro football record for your toss-up question worth 20 points whose record did he break Whitey Ford Lou Groza Lou Groza is correct for 20 points <laughs> Lou the Toe he hit 12 in a row in 1953 and in the entire season to show you how good Groza was he kicked 26 field goals and missed only three times Lou Groza correct the two free throws go to the Yankees here's a two game consecutive streak that became an all-time first in the baseball record books. Terry of the Giants needs one more strike to get a no-hitter. Flood takes it. It's strike three, a no-hitter for Gaylord Perry. A one-to-nothing win over St. Louis here at San Francisco on September 17th, 1968. A date to remember, and you can't top that. Gaylord Perry. But it's daytime the next afternoon, September 18th. You guessed it. Ray Washburn of the Cardinals, one out away from another no-hitter. Here's McCovey at bat. A pop fly back of second base into short right center field. He's got it, a no-hitter for Ray Washburn. These two teams have played two no-hit games within 20 hours of time at Candlestick Park. One to nothing, Terry. Two to nothing, Washburn. On that topic, and let's say, uh, Whitey, uh, you never had the no-hitter, did you? Never, no, Never not one. even in Little League. And Allie Reynolds, you not only got one, but you got two in the same year. Right. 1951? Right. 1951, you got two that year. That had to be more than fun. Well, we'll stay with that topic, no, no hitters, for 10 points. Which of uh, the following has not pitched a perfect game? They've all pitched no hitters. We want the man who has not pitched a perfect no hitter. Alphabetically, Jim Bunning, Catfish Hunter, Sandy Koufax, Don Larson, Bill Singer. You have five seconds. Catfish Hunter. Catfish Hunter is incorrect. We double the point total, which would give you the lead, NBA stars. 
Is it Jim Bunning, Catfish Hunter, Sandy Koufax, Don Larson, or Bill Singer who pitched, who did not pitch the perfect no-hit, no-run game? Yeah, five seconds. Sandy Koufax? Sandy Koufax did pitch one. That's incorrect. The man who did not pitch a perfecto was Bill Singer. Bill Singer was the correct answer. The second free throw belongs to the Yankees. They still have a slim lead. A consecutive streak that really changed the complexion of a key World Series game. Watch closely now. Yankee skipper Casey Stengel to the mound. That'll be all for Eddie Lopat. He's given up seven hits and four runs here in the Dodgers' sixth inning, and the Dodgers have pulled it within two, six, four. The chief, Allie Reynolds, out of the bullpen to try to put out the fire. Bert Schotten has called upon Spider Jorgensen to hit for Carl Erskine. Big crowd here at Ebbets Field rooting for the Dodgers as Allie Reynolds goes into the wide up the pitch. Check swing, strike three. Reynolds has gotten the Dodgers here in the sixth inning. They settle for four, and the score remains six to four. In the ninth inning, one out. Reynolds has retired eight straight men. Here's Gene Hermansky. The two strike pitch by Reynolds. Got him swinging. Hermansky is out, and the Dodgers down to their final out, trailing six to four. Dick Whitman batting for Jack Manta. Reynolds pitch. He got him swinging. Straight three. The ball game is over. The Yankees take a three game to one lead in the 49 series. Dr. Bobby Brown, Tony Henrik, Joe Coleman, Joe Rizzuto congratulates the Chiefs. He's won it for the Yanks. Reynolds' pitching performance was masterful that day, and in the series, in fact, he gave up no runs in a total of 12 and a third innings pitch. A teammate of Reynolds holds the all time Yankee club record for least strikeouts as a hitter for a full season. He struck out only 12 times. For 10 points, a former teammate who holds that record, or a former Yankee. You've got five seconds. You sure he was a teammate of his? I, I'm saying he was a Yankee. He was a Yankee. Oh. Time's up for 20 points, NBA stars. What man holds the Yankee record for the least time striking out in the season? Only 12. Five seconds. Uh, I'd say Bobby Richardson. Bobby Richardson is incorrect. I, w I couldn't believe it either. Yogi Berra struck out only 12 times in 1950. Whitey Ford knew the no, answer. Whitey's sitting here yelling Yogi Berra to us. And you kept shaking him off. He like kept a good saying Richardson. <laughs> All right. We've completed four rounds and a great game on Sports Challenge. The score reads the Yankees 80, the NBA Stars 70. We're very pleased, fans, to let you know that all our panelists will receive this brand new Mattel Sports Challenge Instant Replay Quiz Game. Enjoy at home with your kids. I know they'll have fun. And mo moment, our big bonus biography round, right after we pause for this Sports Challenge timeout. Challenge the score very close. The Yankees lead 80 to 70 over the NBA All-Stars. And for 90 points, time now for our bonus biography round. And with the clues, here's Johnny. Our bonus biography superstar is enshrined in the Hall of Fame of his sport. His splendid career spanned four decades from 1930 to 1960. His first big league manager is now president of the American League. Stop the NBA All-Stars. Your answer, please. Ted Williams. Ted Williams is correct, and the NBA All-Stars have won again. And here he is, the splendid splinter, Ted Williams. Oh, great to see you again, Ted. I'm afraid that you're a little easy, that uh, as a mystery guest, that you would be identified very quickly. Ted Williams is known as one of the all-time great hitters. But Ted Williams was also a major league pitcher once. Well, now, that was a long time ago. I, uh, we were playing the Tigers, and uh, we had a doubleheader going, and uh, they were really shellacking us the first game. And uh, because we were a little short of pitchers, I, uh, I heard Joe Cronin say, who will we pitch the rest of this game? And I nudged one of the coaches, and I said, let me pitch. So I got my opportunity. I can't say that I was so hot, but uh, my only claim to fame as a pitcher is that uh, I got, finally got the bases loaded, and I got Rudy York with two strikes, and I come sidearm with my best curveball, and he still claims to this day that I quick pitched him. But I got it over, and he took it, and it was strike three. That was Ted Williams, the pitcher. When is that, 1939? 1940. 1940. Yeah. And your biggest thrill, uh, along with hitting a home run in your last game as a big leaguer? Well, I hit a home run in the All-Star game in, in uh, 1941, and that was just at the right time of Bullock's career, you know, and everything. 
Uh, he felt that was the biggest thing he'd ever done in his life, and that home run to me was the biggest thrill I ever got. Now the manager of the Washington Senators, and he looks good enough that if you'd like to stay with the Angels, we could use a good cleanup, man. Yeah. Ted, thank you for visiting. I just want to tell you, the three guys over there didn't make my life any better. Laura, go over and meet them. They didn't make his life any easier, nor any other hitters. Ah. Ted Williams, one of the all-time baseball greats. And fans, in a moment, Johnny Gilbert will tell you about all our winners and about next week's challengers. First, this sports challenge timeout. You know, thinking back in one of our sports challenge shows, we had a film of Bill Sharman where he was throwing a pass to Bill Cousy the full length of the court, and it went through the hoop. He admitted it was a pass, but it went through for two points. That was the kind of shot he just made getting Ted Williams to rally the NBA stars to win their second game, 144-80 to 80, over the New York Yankees. And to run down the official scoring, here's Johnny Gilbert. Well, Dick, it's true. The Basketball Hall of Famers with a total of 144 points are again the winners of this sports challenge. And the Boys Club of Manatee County from Bradentown, Florida, for whom they were playing, will receive $1,000 worth of AMF Void Athletic Equipment. There are no losers on sports challenge. The 68th Precinct Youth Council of Brooklyn, New York, whom the New York Yankees represented, will receive $500 worth of Void Athletic Equipment from sports challenge. And by the way, if you have a junior athletic organization you'd like to see represented, drop a line to sports challenge 5800 Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood, California. Since the NBA a Hall of Famers won again this week, they will return next week. And Dick, who's going to be here to challenge? Well, next week, the challenges will be a team of all-time great New York. You're going to see the New Yorkers again. New York football giants, Frank Gifford, Kyle Rode, and Charlie Connolly. They'll join our champions, the NBA star George Shirley Dick Amber. We'll see you again next week on the Sports Challenge.